Okay, thank you. So, um, yes, Stephen Doherty, I'm the industry executive for health. Um, I think I was invited along to, um, for the, you know, Scottish continuity, because it seems to be the thing, because maybe they felt sorry that there's no continuity of rugby, but anyway, um, well done to England. So, um, I've been at Microsoft for the last four and a half months, um, but I was a CIO for the last four and a half years, and I felt the pain around disparate systems and trying to get systems to talk to each other and trying to get um, access to data. So I've known Tomas and, and Anju and the team at Morand, better by Morand, better, for a few years now. So it's, it's quite nice to be here, actually. So Microsoft's mission is to empower every person, every organization the planet to achieve more. Right? And importantly, the way we can do this is health. Health is super important to us. And what that translates to us as a health team is to empower our customers and partners to make health and care personal, effective, affordable. And we're looking to be the strategic partner to the health system by 2021. So the quadruple aim, I think if you look at these aims, they're pretty much the same that everyone talks about, better care, productivity, better health. Um, big thing for me is also giving clinicians back time. So Topol did his review uh, for NHS England, but also wrote in his book, Deep Medicine, um, about the gift of time. So when I was back at South London in Maudsley, um, affectionately known as SLAM, Multiple systems, multiple logins, you know, it, it, it gives clinicians burnout. It's so difficult. So it's important we look at how we can join up these systems, and this is what we're going to talk about. I didn't know there was that many clicks on it. Should have practiced, right? Just got here. Um, if you think about it, we are reactive, um, and it's disconnected. It's cyclical, but we want to get to this intelligent health where it's all connected, where the patient's part of the process. Current perspective on e-health. Well, this has probably been talked about um, throughout today, but a little anecdote. So back at South London and Maudsley, SLAM, um, so the country is split into sustainability transformation partnerships, STPs. And South London and Maudsley was part of the South East STP. And there was a project maybe about four years ago, three to four years ago, where they joined up records with their local partners. It was called the, the, the local care record. And GPs, uh, hospitals, secondary, uh, community could see the care record. And I remember um, I was given a speech to students at City University, and I do this every year, students that are going through sort of digital leadership, and I explained how this was such a great thing, and they looked at me to say, really? Is this is where we are as a health system? Yes, but we're getting better, right? So, putting the patient at the center of the healthcare delivery, um, safety and privacy, of course, and future access to a high level of health care for all citizens locally and globally. So some customer background. And listen, I'm, I'm only here to introduce the good work that others do. It's kind of what I did as a CIO as well, to be honest with you. Um, it's all about the Ministry for Health in Malta, um, financed by the ERDF, European Funds, and to implement the project that will enhance the, the health of the population. So if you think about Malta, it's um, a population of 450,000 or so, but it's one of the most populated, uh, one of the most densely populated um, countries in the world and in Europe. So I think it's probably best for me to think about handing over at this point in time to the people that actually make this stuff work. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Stephen, and good afternoon, everyone. So, um, um, first of all, just a little bit of a background about myself. Um, um, well, I've been, uh, well, my background is a computer scientist, and I'm a technical person, yes. Um, but I do have a strong affiliation with the, with the health domain, let's do it this way. I've been an enterprise architect working for the um, leading Maltese government IT agency for the, well, for more than 10 years, primarily focusing on the health domain. Um, fast forward to today, I'm actually, um, I, I had a number of technology units in, in PTL, which is one of the leading IT companies on the island, whereby we do actually deliver a number of, of, of uh, projects, most of which are, a number of which are, are health related to the government of Malta also. Um, we do have systems like the Farmers of Your Choice, the e-prescription systems, and yes, today we're also partnering up with, with Better to deliver the National Electronic Health Record um, uh, project for the government of Malta. So, um, good, let me switch on to the possibly more interesting parts of the, of the presentation. So, um, if I really had to summarize the, the procurement that the government of Malta actually issued, um, which was pretty much a huge document like this with a couple of hundred pages inside that. I believe that this, actually this diagram was, could summarize pretty much everything, or at least most of it is this way. And uh, the boxes in the middle that you're seeing over here, the, the orange parts, are pretty much the, um, the data sources that the government of Malta wanted to um, uh, put into the center of, of, of their, their, their architecture, let's put it this way. And it was those data sets that uh, um, um, were pretty much the, 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 the basis of the National Electronic Health Record for, for, for Malta. Um, obviously, this was not um, a finite, let's put it this way, a finite data set, but obviously the start the start of, of where Malt actually wanted to take their national electronic health record. Um, uh, going back to the, the, when the standard actually came out in, in 2018, um, uh, obviously the, 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 the whole point and the whole strategy that, that uh, the government of Malta had in mind was to, to open up the silos of data, obviously similar to, I believe, pretty much all countries out there, one of the major problems, you know, that um, uh, health institutions are the, 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 the closed systems and closed data, and one of the primary objectives was to open up the data. Um, uh, and uh, this is, I believe, where um, uh, the, the, the open air and, and better platform actually sort of fit really nicely in, 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 in delivering this project. Good. Um, uh, some timelines, so actually, as I mentioned, um, uh, this tender was actually issued in the uh, end of 2018, was contracted to, to, uh, to Better in, uh, in um, pretty much the beginning of 2019, and um, pretty much till today, we've been working um, quite heavily with various other people on the ground, so the, the, the Ministry of Health with Microsoft, um, PTL as the partner on the ground for, for better, with better um, um, people. And uh, pretty much today, um, um, we've, we've done quite a number of, of, of uh, data modeling um, uh, workshops with clinicians on the ground. Um, uh, Ian over here was pretty much here in Malta help us out, um, helping out in the, in the modeling. Um, and where do we stand today? So pretty much today we've finalized all architecture and technology-related um, um, tasks. Um, and uh, we're actually implementing the, the, um, the actual infrastructure on the government of Malta's um, Azure Hybrid Cloud. Um, um, and uh, in fact, we actually have the, the, the dev and test environments up and running. And very soon, we're going to be concluding the, the integration is most probably the most challenging part of the project and hopefully looking at a go-live date of April 2020. Good. Um, this is the, pretty much the, the delivery team, I call it, 
of the project. So as you can see, we do have um, stakeholders from the government of Malta and, uh, and uh, pretty much a number of stakeholders, um, uh, which are pretty much better and pity, and also Microsoft, who is actually helping us on the ground to, to deliver this project. Um, um, to deliver this project. <coughs> cool. Over here, um, maybe one of the more interesting or more challenging um, tasks that we actually had was um, identifying which, so how we could actually map the data sources that the um, uh, that were required for the national um, health record of Malta, how they could actually be mapped to the Open in the HR templates, and pretty much the number, the the the, the data sets that we've seen in the in the, in the diagram that we saw before, actually the the, the ones in, in orange, have actually been mapped. Um, using the open air templates, um, which um, w w with with the the um, uh, clinicians on the ground actually identified all the templates that were needed. <coughs> yes, many clouds over here in this diagram. So pretty much this uh, um, one other challenging aspect that we had as part of the discussions we had with with both the IT agency um, uh, of, of the government of Malta, as well as Microsoft and Better, was how are we actually going to be positioning um, this, um, this solution within, I call it, the, the larger enterprise of, of the government of Malta. So pretty much the, the lower clouds at the bottom is pretty much what we call the government cloud, the government cloud in the sense of, I mean, you can actually say those are pretty much all um, information systems hosted within the government network, within the data centers that the government of Malta has. Um, the block on the top part is the um, segregated government um, hybrid cloud that um, has been procured and through a tender through Microsoft. And the top right cloud is pretty much the the, the patient-centric, I mean, the, the primarily the all data that is within the open air or the, the better platform will actually be primarily exposed through one of Malta's government um, patient-centric um, portals, which is the My Health portal, primarily. And going forward, I mean, the, the aim is to is to continue building on on the products and, and, and tools to, to expose the data within the, the NEHR platform. <clears throat> Good. Finally, um, just talking a little bit about more on the architecture that was agreed on with Microsoft. I mean, this was actually quite an interesting um, phase of the project where we worked very closely with Microsoft and better to pretty much come up with um, the architecture that was required to take forward this project now and for the 10 years um, going forward. Obviously, we needed an architecture that was um, scalable in nature and pretty much fits within the Azure Stack um, building box provided. Um, uh, the solution that was sort of let's say, um, confirmed with, with all stakeholders was a mix of, of IaaS and the PLAS and PAS building blocks. and uh, we can actually say this was approved by all stakeholders, and today this is what's being implemented um, in the production environment. Um, I already mentioned sort of we've, we're looking at a number of different platforms in the sense of so there's a production environment, and there's also a tester environment which is a replica of this of this setup, as well as a development environment that we're currently implementing as we speak now. That's all from my end. That's all. Thank you. So, we have any questions for Chris or Stephen? While you're thinking about that, just to let you know, the, the templates were actually largely forks from the work we'd done in Aperta. I shouldn't tell you that because we build them for that, <laughs> but basically, we, we used all, a lot of the templates that we'd built for the Aperta um, CKM group uh, in the UK. 
and they're basically rebadged and largely as they were. Then we then took the same ones that we'd adapted in, in, fin in Malta and we're using them in Finland. Now again, they have to be adapted for local use, but we're getting this reuse and reuse and reuse. The cost savings are huge. So. Mike, Mike's coming, thanks. Interesting project. Uh, well done. I'm, I'm asking about the workforce. How do you uh, make sure about the digital culture and the workforce in Malta to use that or develop it? Uh, is that part of your responsibility? Because it looks like it's a high tech you are trying to deliver to the government. Are you using the government uh, workforce or it's, a, it's a academic? I would like to know that. Thank you very much. No, actually, the, the entire implementation is being done by both Better and PTL. Um, we do have uh, quite a bit of connections with the Malta IT agency who is doing parts of the, the, the implementation. So obviously, the, the Azure stack is, is pretty much, let's put it this way, set up for the government of Malta in the sense of it has been segregated um, as part of um, uh, the Converge project was awarded to, to Microsoft. But the actual implementation, integration, is all being done by Better and PTL. And, and PTL. Um, the, the visualization part, which I mentioned before, which is the predominantly going forward at the moment, which is the My Help Orbit, that is a government project. But yet again, it is out of scope of this project. We're just providing the platform um, um, and, and the data um, uh, within the platform. I should add to that that when I visited and worked with these guys, I was amazed at the level of in-house informatics expertise for what is a small country. Very, very impressive. So there's, there is lots of local knowledge uh, that's been tapped into there. Okay, that's fine. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.